Mm, okay. Um, good afternoon. Uh, yes, we are dealing with visual literacy today. As you all know that visual lit um, literacy is a very broad concept and there are multiple literacies. Uh, and then now visual literacy is part of that. So we are going to focus specifically on cartoons because as much as uh, literacy is a broad concept, uh, visual literacy also has different parts of it. Like today we're focusing on cartoons. So we'll take a very simple route. Um, we'll draw from prior knowledge and then obviously try to understand this visual literacy and the cartoon concept and then um, try to analyze a few cartoons, then that will be it. Obviously, we'll try, as I said, understand the concepts. Also, try to, to understand the meta language of visual literacy. Once we we, we, we are able to understand the meta language of visual literacy, we'll then be able to now analyze cartoons and also come to a realization that uh, cartoons are also part of the multiple literacies that we have and they fall under visual literacy. But um, surely you've already figured that by now. But anyways, um, what are cartoons? What are cartoons? Um, I often say this, um, the most important thing in language is expression. Being able to express ideas, uh, thoughts, feelings, and so on and so forth. So it, it, it so happens that sometimes you might know something, but don't uh, you find out that you're not able to uh, articulately um, express what that thing is. Um, words sometimes tend to fail us at some point, but this is why I challenge you. It's important to always try and make sure that you are as expressive as you possibly can be. That's how we develop language, that's how we enrich language, and that's how we get to understand different things and know how to exist in different spaces through expression. So think about what you know cartoons to be. Then think about your favorite, what's your favorite cartoon, you know? Um, what is this visual literacy that we're talking about? Now, introduction. Now, we are going to introduce this. the very simple thing. We're doing visual literacy today and we're focusing on cartoons. Now, let's start with cartoons. Now, this is a simple drawing. Simple drawing, um, just highlighting humor in an exaggerated way, you know, because that's how the characters will be portrayed or the objects there. Now, it, it, it obviously, that means that they have an element of satire in it and mostly published in newspapers and magazines. So we should be knowing by now that we are strictly focusing on print cartoons. Print cartoons, because obviously there are those uh, moving pictures, the cartoons that you watch on TV, YouTube, and all these other spaces. Uh, but that's not what we're focusing on today. Today we're focusing on um, print cartoons. So Then now, visual literacy is the ability to interpret, negotiate, and make meaning from information presented in the form of an image, extending the meaning of literacy, which uh, commonly signifies interpretation of a written or printed text. Simple thing. Now, um, 
any text, visual or written, is literacy. Now, the ability to decode meaning and interact with that text, that is literacy. Now, the ability then, which is simply literacy was in, in the early days, was limited to being able to read and write because you are able to decipher meaning in a written text. That was literacy. But now the multiple literacy, the digital literacy, visual literacy, and so on and so forth. So now when we talk about visual literacy, it's being able to interact and negotiate meaning and, and, and try to and, and being able to understand visual literacy and uh, visual texts that is visual literacy then you are lit visually literate when you are able to decipher and decode meaning in visual text like cartoons advertisements and so on and so forth cartoons are created for the purpose of conveying a message how do we go about understanding this meaning or this message? Now, there's always a purpose of any cartoon that is created or produced. There's a meaning. Now, some are just for fun, for, 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 for humor and, and just comedy. But some are just as much as they are funny, they just con, um, uh, convey certain messages. So, um, especially those political cartoons, there will be are portraying something about um, a current uh, political event, and then they, there's a message underlying the humor. Um, so there's always something that the cartoonist is trying to uh, say to us, be it a joke or just um, um, a message. Um, yes, so then it's important Oh, sorry about that. To be able to make meaning and um, analyze. So how do we analyze? There are these two tools. Firstly, it's important to understand the difference between a cartoon and a cartoon strip. Um, to understand the thought bubble and the speech bubble, the difference there. And to understand the significance of a setting in any given cartoon or cartoon strip. Um, characters how do they contribute to meaning making action how do we see action and how do we then um uh, 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 um add it to the analysis in words because as much as these are cartoons but they are also written text and um how do they contribute also to the cartoon and what the cartoonist is trying to communicate to us those are the things that we need to master and then we are good to go so all these tools are called the meta language of visual literacy now um a cartoon is just uh, a simple drawing with the sim term single frame but when there's more than one or when there's a series of frames that is called a cartoon strip because of the many frames i hope um that is as clear as it should be now the thought bubble and the speech bubble obviously um the appearance there it the thought bubble would appear more like a cloud um and cloud like shape and then that would be a window through which we are able to um, access the character's um, thinking but then if it's just speech it's just the bubble would be plain and um and defined and also it will be part of the dialogue that is going on throughout the frames now the setting like this talks to where um the action is taking place in the cartoon um 
why is it important to know where? Because the context is important, it adds more meaning. You know, uh, for instance, if we are the cartoon, the, set, the background there, there's the union buildings. You know that, okay, the setting is Pretoria, uh, the union buildings. Then you kind of know what to express and you, you understand easily what is going on in the cartoon. Or maybe there's a uh, Hilpo Towers and you know that we are in Johannesburg. Or maybe the, the, in the background, there's the Table Mountain, then we know we, we are in Cape Town. Then one, this, what's the significance of the setting? It's, it allows you to easily make meaning because it's easier to understand what's going on when you know where it is going on. So yes, where is the cartoon taking place? Then we look at the visual clues. So, oh, this looks like Cape Town. This looks like this place. Then we are able then to understand as far as we possibly can. Sorry about that. Then the characters. Remember, the characters are also part of this. So, uh, there's what we call caricature. Now, this is a picture now or description of the character in an exaggerated way. Um, the characteristics become exaggerated just so they appear funny or silly. This is to add to the humor, but sometimes they're just stereotyped. It's no more cartoon. Then also it's important to focus on um, the, uh, the facial expression. Um, the facial expression, you look at the eyebrows, you look at um, the eyes, you look at the mouth, and so on and so forth. You look at how are they portrayed, you know, because they contribute to the emotions and whatnot. Because, for instance, raised eyebrows can be shock or um, inquiry and so on. Um, if the mouth is wide open and, and the person is talking, can signify shouting and, and or singing you know but it depends on the context obviously and what is actually going on but the facial expression is important and contributes to really making and the action how do we how can we tell that this is action when this is a still picture it's not moving there are action lines these lines will show you that this character is moving towards that direction or is doing this and that or sometimes it's a car or an animal, et cetera. Now, these are lines or stripes that represent the movement of the character or object. Now, the sound that illustrate, the ways that illustrate sound or noises, they are important because for instance, it's, um, it's more, preferable to be using the sound than like explaining what's going on. Um, you know, it's more interesting when you go bang, 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 instead of saying gunshot in brackets to indicate the action. So these, they add to the fun in the, in the cartoon. So normally like they use the, the words onomatopoeia, the words, um, that represents sounds. Uh, like I said, uh, for gunshot, we normally see the use bang, 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 or then for dog barking is um, woof, woof. Those are kind of the sounds and they contribute because some of the things are not said. You just see through those and you have to be able to tell what's going on there. Now, what is being said? Because um, as much as this is more about the visual part, but we need not um, neglect words because they're also part of this and they contribute as well. What words are being said there? Now, you look at the words and how they appear. If they are bold and bigger, that may show that this person is shouting. You know, there are many things that we can really identify as far as words are concerned. 
in the sun. Uh, okay, we did that, sorry. Now, here is an example. Um, just take a quick scan, then I'll explain. Um, if we look at here, words in loud in, in bold uh, um, means that this is loud. If you look at the words, it's web, 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 and they are in bold and they are bigger. That shows. But now, if the words are just the words there alone, you wouldn't really know what's going on. But now, because we see the boy there, <clears throat> we see the boy with the hammer raised up high and um, their nails on the table. Um, and the boy is smiling. Remember we said we focus also on the facial expression. The boy is smiling, which means he's enjoying what's going on. But as you can see, um, He's putting the nails on the table and he's enjoying this. Then look at the second frame. Um, Gavin, what are you doing to the coffee table? There's an exclamation with the question marks um, that show that this woman is shouting. Now also the speech bubble is jacked there that also contributes and um, signifies that this woman is shouting, but more if you look at her mouth, it's wide open. If you look at her eyes, they are wide open. This woman is hysterical. Then the third frame um, no symbol is supposed to be ignored uh, because there's no symbol for decoration. That's just they all contribute to the meaning making. If you look at the asterisk, uh, many would maybe ignore it. It shows confusion. The boy is confused. Now, if you look at the facial expression now, there's a blank expression. This also continues to emphasize confusion. Why would this boy be confused in any case? It's probably because he doesn't understand why his mom is shouting so much. Because this seems like a nice game he's enjoying. Hence, if you look at the last frame, he asks, is there some sort of, is this some sort of a trick question or what? Because he's like, you can see what I'm doing, but why are you asking? And he doesn't really understand what's wrong. The woman, is in despair, the hands on her head shows that. So that's just one particular example that we can work with. But now I want to challenge you. Uh, to try this one on your own, we'll give you five minutes. All right, all right, all right. Now, if you look at, okay, let's just go through the whole um, strip. Uh, it's titled Dilbert by Scott Adams. Now, are you going to the department meeting? Yes, as soon as I plan my routine. I have seven co-workers who I need to avoid on the way. There are non-stop talkers, or three are non-stop talkers. The other four 
ask me for something every time I see them. I've mapped their likely locations and I am working out an avoidance path. Yes, I think I can do it. Is that my name on your list of employees to avoid? I didn't say it was a perfect system. Now, question number one. Explain what the use of the personal pronoun I throughout the cartoon suggests about Dilbert. Dilbert just pre prefers to be alone. Everything that he does is just him and he wants that. Mm, but it also links to the second question. So the second question says, refer to frame five. Yes, frame five. Uh, there's nothing. There's no person there, just uh, Dilbert speaking. Discuss the effectiveness of the technique used by the cartoonist in this frame. Now, it shows just as how determined Dilbert is um, in avoiding his co-workers. Now, the cartoonist provides the structure of the building without characters to emphasize the effort Dilbert has placed in the strategy to avoid his techniques. Now, this is important when you're analyzing or when you have to um, attack questions. Now, you discuss all present ideas of the argument. Now, you focus on the frame that you, you've been, you, you are referred to. You focus on everything that contributes to the papers that the, the, the cartoonist is supposed to, the cartoonist wants to achieve. Then you look at the techniques used um, by the cartoonist, like the characterization, character or stereotype, the setting, punctuation, speech bubbles, and so forth and, and so on and so forth. So these are this is merely the summary of how to really go about um, analyzing cartoons. And this one is for you. Um, go and do it for homework and see if you understand cartoons or how to analyze cartoons. Thank you very much for your time. I hope now you understand what cartoons are and what is a cartoon strip, understanding visual literacy in general. And I hope you are now visual literate. And I hope you can be able now to, um, to analyze different cartoons on your own. Um, thank you very much for your time. See you in the next class. Um, feel free to contact me at my email address siabonga310 at gmail.com for any questions, anything that you want to say or ask, I'll feel free to use my email address. I'll be available and ready to attend to that. Thank you very much.